For nearly 2,500 years, Western civilization has been torn apart and divided into two camps. Plato and Aristotle set the stage for this 2,500-year fight. The fight is over a seemingly simple primacy issue between the two foundational branches of philosophy, metaphysics and epistemology. This fight is all over which has primacy, consciousness, or existence. We can ask ourselves, whose bucket is upside down and whose bucket is right side up, and how can we know? We can study outcomes. Plato and the other early Greek philosophers struggled with how to categorize the thoughts we conceive in our minds compared to the real physical world we observe, which is constantly changing or in a state of flux. For Plato, there were two worlds, not one. The sensible world of changing physical things that we apprehend by means of our senses, and the world of intelligible objects that we apprehend by means of our intellects or minds. The world of ideas had for him a superior grade of reality. The physical things that we perceive through our senses come into being and pass away, continually in flux, changing in one way or another. They have no permanence. The world of changing physical things is thus for Plato a mere shadow of the much more real world of ideas. When we pass from the realm of sense experience to the realm of thought, we ascend to a higher reality. For Plato, then, these two worlds consist of a higher world of ideal forms, the Platonic ideals or perfect ideas, and a lower world of imperfect change. Everything in this lower world of change is an imperfect copy of the perfect idea presented in the unseen world of forms. The imperfect copy is always working in some way changing to try and meet its perfect nature. The objectivist philosopher Ayn Rand said, the Platonist school begins by accepting the primacy of consciousness, by assuming that reality must conform to the content of consciousness, that the presence of any notion in man's mind proves the existence of a corresponding referent in reality. For the Platonist school, then, tier 1 status goes to consciousness, and tier 2 status goes to existence. Aristotle was Plato's student for some 20 years. Aristotle turned this thinking on its head. Aristotle said that existence had primacy over consciousness. Reality set the terms by which consciousness had to abide. Aristotle is the champion of this world, the champion of nature, as against the supernaturalism of Plato. Denying Plato's world of forms, Aristotle maintains that there is only one reality, the world of particulars in which we live, the world men perceive by means of their physical senses. Universals, he holds, are merely aspects of existing entities isolated in a thought by a process of selective attention. The physical world, in his view, is not a shadowy projection controlled by a divine dimension, but is an orderly, intelligible, natural realm open to the mind of man. Aristotle, then, gives Tier 1 status to existence and Tier 2 status to consciousness. Raphael captured this philosophical division in his famous painting, The School of Athens. In this painting, Plato is pointing to the heavens at his supernatural but impractical world of ideals, and Aristotle is pointing down to earth at the tangible, practical world. Eternalism will show that Plato's primacy of consciousness is a false belief, inviting unprincipled willfulness where those who practice this false philosophy attempt to become a law unto themselves. From a gospel perspective, what's the outcome? We will see that this leads to everlasting death. Eternalism will show that Aristotle's primacy of existence is a true belief, inviting principled lawfulness where those who practice this true philosophy attempt to learn the already existing laws of reality, abide by them, and abound. From a gospel perspective, what is the outcome? We will see that this leads to eternal life. In Eternalism, we will follow Aristotle's reasoning and declare that consciousness is the faculty of awareness, the faculty of perceiving that which exists. Western civilization is still divided over this primacy issue. We now find ourselves in a philosophical house divided, hence the philosophical war between religion and science, faith and reason, the moral and the practical. Apostate Christianity kept Plato's two separate worlds by just moving Plato's world of perfect forms into the consciousness of God, what we call God outside the box, and hence the philosophical origins of Christianity's creeds concerning the Godhead. Their God performs supernatural miracles, giving God the primacy over reality that defy the laws of nature as a matter of divine will. These are the creeds which Christ declared to the prophet Joseph Smith to be an abomination in his sight. From a scientific perspective, the scientific and practical world sided with Aristotle with their measuring, discovering, and observing reality.
Tragically, the traditional Christian, Judaic, and Islamic religions have all thrown their allegiance in with the absolutism of God. Traditional Christianity said God was outside reality and created reality as nihilo, or out of nothing. In theological terms, this is called the absolutism of God. In philosophical terms, it is called the primacy of consciousness. The Fourth Lateran Council of 1215 adopted the concept that God, who by his almighty power at the beginning of time, created from nothing both spiritual and corporeal creatures. René Descartes further refined the primacy of consciousness when he said, Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Philosophers who followed, such as George Berkeley, took the primacy of consciousness to an even more absurd level when he said, If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The objects of sense exist only when they are perceived. The Restoration follows Aristotle's primacy of existence when we say God created things ex materia, or from within the universe himself, out of already existing eternal element. In theological terms, this is the absolutism of reality. In philosophical terms, it is called the primacy of existence. In Doctrine and Covenants, Christ himself said, Man was also in the beginning with God. Intelligence, or the light of truth, was not created or made, neither indeed can be. For man is spirit, the elements are eternal, and spirit and element, inseparably connected, receive a fullness of joy, and when separated, man cannot receive a fullness of joy. Joseph Smith, in his King Follett Discourse, further described this primacy of reality, or God-inside-the-box perspective, when he said, Hence we infer that God had materials to organize the world out of chaos, chaotic matter, which is element and in which dwells all the glory. Element had an existence from the time he had. The pure principles of element are principles which can never be destroyed. They may be organized and reorganized, but not destroyed. They had no beginning and can have no end. So this is the God-inside-the-box ontology of eternalism, where reality is absolute. What does this mean practically? It means abide by the rules of reality and abound in progression. Sir Francis Bacon also described the framework of eternalism simply when he said, Nature to be commanded must be obeyed. It is important to recognize that each of the remaining gospel primacy issues we will be discussing has an identical equivalent in both theological and philosophical language. For example, when we say absolutism of reality in a gospel context, the philosophical equivalent is primacy of existence, which is also the same thing as God inside the box. This means that reality makes the rules, and even God works according to those rules. This is the metaphysical equivalent of lawfulness. When we say absolutism of God in a gospel context, the philosophical equivalent is primacy of consciousness, which is also the same thing as God outside the box. This means that God invents the rules. He does whatever he wants outside of reality. This is the metaphysical equivalent of willfulness. Now that you are aware of these concepts, you are going to start to see them everywhere in Latter-day Saint theology. For example, President John Taylor said, Permit me to say there are eternal laws that exist with the gods in the eternal worlds and from which they cannot depart, and to which they are bound in all their acts. All beings, all things, from the great creator to the minutest form of life are governed by the law of their existence. Elder Kenneth Johnson said, It is important to understand that natural laws were not determined on the basis of popularity. They were established and rest on the rock of reality. Elder D. Todd Christofferson also said, His, God's, commandments are the voice of reality. Our first true philosophical primacy issue pertains to the nature of God. The reason primacy issue number one was chosen is that it is both the greatest truth and the greatest heresy known to man. Elder Bruce R. McConkie said, The greatest truth known to man is that there is a God in heaven who is infinite and eternal, that he is our Father in heaven, that he has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's, that he is a literal person, and that if we believe and obey his laws, we can gain the exaltation that he possesses. Now that is the greatest truth and the most glorious concept known to the human mind and the reverse of it is the greatest heresy in Christendom. Regarding this greatest heresy, Elder Bruce R. McConkie said, This first and chief heresy 
of a now fallen and decadent Christianity, and truly it is the father of all heresies, swept through all the congregations of true believers in the early centuries of the Christian era. It pertained then, and it pertains now, to the nature and kind of being that God is. This new God, no longer a personal father, no longer a personage of tabernacle, became an incomprehensible, three-in-one spirit essence that filled the immensity of space. The adoption of this false doctrine about God effectively destroyed the true worship among men and ushered in the age of universal apostasy. This issue is the starting point for all of the other primacy issues we will discuss in later modules. Consider the following chart with our eight major gospel primacy issues in their respective philosophical branch. Aristotle and Plato are represented as philosophical figureheads at the start. The three E's of eternalism are represented. Eternal laws or metaphysics in which the restoration sides with Aristotle and the primacy of existence. The apostasy sides with Plato and the primacy of consciousness. Depending on which side of this first primacy issue from metaphysics is chosen, willfulness or lawfulness, we will see that logical consistency will start causing increasing divides in later philosophical branches of eternal truths, or epistemology, and eternal lives, or ethics. So our first true primacy issue is the greatest truth known to mankind. Our first false primacy issue is the greatest heresy known to mankind. Regarding the critical nature of this first primacy issue involving God and reality, Joseph Smith said, it is necessary for us to have an understanding of God himself in the beginning. If we start right, it is easy to go right all the time. But if we start wrong, we may go wrong and it will be a hard matter to get right. Aristotle also conveyed this idea when he said, The least initial deviation from the truth is multiplied later a thousandfold. Elder Uchtdorf described the ultimate consequences when he said, The difference between happiness and misery often comes down to an error of only a few degrees. Everyone has principles that they believe and follow in their lives. The question is, are these principles consistent or contradictory as a whole? Each of the primacy issues on both the upper and lower rows of the chart are coherent with each other. That is, each issue logically leads to the next in a progression from left to right. Correct principles harmonize with each other above, and incorrect principles harmonize with each other below. What is the ultimate destination this leads us to if applied consistently? Correct principles lead to eternal life, joy, and happiness. As a metaphor, think of all the time, effort, and laws of reality that went into building the Twin Towers. Incorrect principles lead to everlasting death, sorrow, and misery. As a metaphor, think of the short amount of time it took to destroy what it took years to build. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Christian Eternalism YouTube channel and visit www.christianeternalism.org.